Hello, welcome back to Wicked Works. We're doing something a little different today. As you can see, this is not an air-cooled Volkswagen. This is, in fact, a 1981 Toyota Celica convertible that I'm going to do a carb swap on, which means also doing an intake swap, as well as an AC delete and getting rid of some vacuum-related stuff. <laughs> Like I said, this is a 1981 Toyota Celica convertible. Um, apparently, according to my customer, they made less than 900 of these. Um, it's a pretty solid car. I think he won it on an auction. I can't remember where it came from, but he didn't, he didn't pay a lot for it. Um, it's had some stuff done already. I think he kind of got the brakes working, ended up using some Chrysler parts, I think, to do that because you know, there's not a lot of parts available for this. Also, the seats do not belong to this car. And unfortunately, the gap here, because of that, is really small. And my chunky thighs don't, they don't fit under any of that. So we're going to either have to find new seats or figure out how to get these seats lower. Um, we've got a little bit of metal work to do on the floor. But the, uh, the biggest project for today is actually going to be getting rid of all of this. Uh, so this is a 22R, apparently, according to the sticker. Um, the carburetors that came on these uh, were kind of a pain in the ass to tune because all of the, the majority of the tuning ports, so to speak, have been blocked off from the factory, so you can't actually touch anything. This is something that I ran into with a Corolla that I did a couple years ago, or last year, the year before, maybe it was before I mangled my hands. Uh, that was an 83, and I, I was having a lot of issues getting that tuned up. Um, so thankfully, apparently there's some company that makes uh, carb swap kits specifically for these engines. Um, so it should all just be plug and play kind of stuff, but we've got to pull the AC system out. I've got to get rid of all the vacuum stuff. Um, I'm gonna try not to, lose too much coolant out of this, but I'm basically yoinking everything off of this side of the engine to put a new uh, intake on. Um, he's already done quite a number of things. We're also going to do uh, a full exhaust, but I want to I handle this first and make sure that I can drive everything around before I start yoinking that stuff apart. So let's get started pulling this apart, shall we? Just, just come off, man. Wow, there's a lot of stuff here. A lot of vacuum lines. A lot of, a lot of all kinds of stuff. Um, all right, so where do we want to start? Um, I guess electrically. Because a lot of this stuff is going to end up going away. Like, it's, it's getting rid of pretty much all of this wiring. I wonder how long it's going to be before I... Uh, I decide that I'm just gonna time lapse this because it's taking forever already. Well, unsurprisingly, this is a wild pain in the ass because there's actually no room to do anything. Of the six nuts and bolts that I've taken off so far, I've dropped five of them. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm just gonna pull this off so I can swear freely. And, uh, you know, when something significant happens, I'll get you back in here. So I'm trying to get this last nut off the carburetor and I had to get this stupid canister out of the way and there's a screw down here and a screw down here both of which are phillips head you don't have any room to do anything so i had to put a i had to put a wrench on the on the flats of my on this screwdriver to get the one on the back and then i had to put vice grips on a stubby to get it in here so that i could turn that that's why i hate cars from the 80s there's no space to do anything so hopefully now I just got to do that nut, 
or undo that nut, and then there's probably 1,700 more vacuum lines to do, and then I can take the carburetor off, hopefully. All right, once I realized that at least two of these carburetor bolts were actually through bolted, which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard, uh, I think, oh, I think uh, this is ready to be removed. Holy hell, what an awful setup. All right, well, that, uh, that gives me a little bit more room to work here. I'm going to try to pull everything off that I can without removing the coolant hose because I know that's going to make a proper mess. Um, so that may actually, I may also take the battery out just to like get some arm room over here. Look at all these vacuum lines. Look at all of this. Oh. God, I hope none of that's important. <laughs> because I'm not going to be bothered to figure any of it out if it is. Take, uh, okay, that doesn't have a little phenolic, that is. Oh, no, that is. Does this come off? Or am I, I feel like I'm going to break that, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, yeah, okay, so there's a lot of little pipelators and whatnot and diaphragms and things that i got to take off, uh, so I'm just going to keep moving forward here. Well, actually, it'd be nice to have the compressor out of the way in order to do the intake. I don't know how to evacuate these. <laughs> I'm hoping there isn't any pressure in here anyway. Uh, that's why I don't do AC stuff. I'm just going to do a little... All right. Well, nothing came out of that. Uh, I wonder if that means I can just take the hoses off then. Nothing yet. I'm not, other than my anxiety, I'm not feeling weird. All right, cool. So now I just got to figure out how to get that big honker out of there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, neat. <sighs> All right, so what do we have left? I'm pretty sure this is a secondary air pump because um, it's just got a whole bunch of vacuum lines going to a diaphragm down here. So that's going to get deleted as well. Um, I think I'm going to just carry on with everything that's up here first before I start brooding around down there. So uh, I believe next is going to be the intake. Um, thankfully, I've got a lot more room now to handle all of that. So uh, I'm just going to start yoinking these bolts out, and hopefully it'll it'll come with it. What's that? Is that rubber? Or is that metal? What does that go to? Oh, it's a fuel line that's totally in the way. All right. So if I was correct, this should just come off and dump coolant all over everything. There we go. I'll try to get that bucket a little bit further. Still feels like something's attached. Looks like just that coolant pipe, I think. All right, well, that made a big old mess. So I think my next uh, step here, I'm gonna see if I can get that secondary air pump out and see what the hell that thing is and whether or not that needs to stay. Yes, it seems to be related to that pump. A few other things I wanna clean up and get out of here. You know, clean down the side of the block, yada yada, and get uh, get this all ready to go back together, um, and see what provisions are on the new intake to facilitate the things that I'm getting rid of. So, we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm gonna go shove some pasta down my neck and then handle this. Okay, I've got the air pump out. I've got the other unmentionables out. A lot of vacuum stuff out. Uh, a lot of the AC stuff is out. i got to figure out what to do with all these connector ends now. Uh, so the next step is just going to be kind of like cleaning all this up. I want to clean that mating surface on the head, get all the dirt and crap out of here to make, clean the engine bay up a little bit. Um, and then it'll be ready to uh, start slapping back together. So I'm going to take care of this uh, and then probably tomorrow we'll get back in here 
and uh, start reassembling everything. The only other thing left to remove is going to be this guy here. And this actually goes around to the other side. It's like a preheat or something. I don't know if it like actually goes into that. So it'll be interesting to see if that's just a, you know an exhaust leak now that I have that off on the other side. So I may have to pull more of this apart, which I have to do anyway to put the headers on it. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what I got going on now. Uh, so I will see you tomorrow. Okay, good morning. It's another day. Um, upon doing some research last night uh, and going through all my parts and everything, there's a few more bits and pieces that I have to remove off of this. Uh, there's going to be a block off plate that goes on this guy. I got to pull that off, and that's going to have a block off plate. This entire tube is going to get deleted. I got to pull this tube out and put a block off plate on that, which means I should probably get rid of that bracket as well. Um, and then there's a plate that goes on the bottom side of the intake that has a little fitting on it here. And that's going to feed uh, the heater core. Okay, so it's going to come out of the radiator, through the upper rad hose, into the thermostat. Uh, then it's going to go partly into the cylinder head. It's going to fill up that chamber on the bottom uh, and come out of that block off that plate that I was just talking about and into this guy and then into the heater core and out of the heater core and into the block and out of the block and into the lower rad hose and that's your that's your flow or is it the, at least that's how I'm interpreting it so we'll see how that goes but uh, so I got a few more things to pull off here I'm gonna have the heater going while I do that um, and then once we uh, get to the point of starting to throw things back together I'll uh, get the camera back on all right I've got my block off on that I had to make a gasket for that because Thought it came in the kit, and it didn't, so I just made one, put a little bit of RTV on that, and put some new bolts in, torque that down. This guy back here, uh, that was exhaust gases going into the head, so I put a little bit of RTV on that just for good measure, but other than that, I just slapped it on. So now, I think we're ready to start assembling the intake. <clears throat> oh, God. So the instructions from LCE... Uh, say to before you like actually finalize this put the plate on oh god put the plate on get all your bolts in and make sure that you know everything is going in the way it should because apparently due to casting differences in the Offenhauser intake manifold some block plates may require a slight modification this plate blah 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 run all the bolts through make sure that they're easily blah 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 blah, blah. if they're not blah 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 this is all good so uh, while I have this here, so that I can get this guy in the right orientation, um, before I finalize all this, I'm gonna do this first because this is gonna bolt, if this is the front of the engine, where the uh, thermostat is, this guy, this fitting, is gonna go back here, and I need it facing towards the back of the car so that I can run a hose into this for the heater core. Um, so I've got to, I want to get that orientation right to make sure I don't have any kinking. Um, so I'm going to do that first, and then once I have that all sorted out, I'll pull this plate off. There's a fun little gasket to go on it with a little bit of schmoo. It looks like an agalator or a crocodile. Um, put it on there with some schmoo, and then we can start trying to fit this guy. Um, okay, so yeah, let me, uh, I'm going to get some thread schmoo to put on this and then see if we can't get that in. Come on, don't be shy now, I know it's cold. I hate the cold, i tell you what. Okay, I hope that'll do. Okay, so Agalator's going to go this way. Get a little bit of schmoo. Put that on there. Get the gasket in there. That should be good. Okay. Now I can put this on. All right. I think this is good now. So I'm going to let this set a little bit. I got one more plate to put on that actually goes on with 
the intake gasket it looks like so let me jump over to doing this and then hopefully by then this will get be ready to go on so we've got this big honker that goes in here looks like it actually goes on this way maybe is it that way yep it should be goes on like that and I think it's kind of like a universal gasket type thing because obviously these don't do anything um, but that plate is going to go on there um, when I saw this installed it didn't look like fella used any uh, any schmoo on that gasket so I guess we're just gonna try to do it without that it's just gonna go right in there all right I'm just I gotta I'm gonna shut the camera off and tighten these up now all right, I've got the intake on, nice and pretty. Um, it does appear that uh, no thermostat came with this kit. So I, uh, I gotta go get a thermostat and also I wanna replace the uh, coolant temperature sensor sender thing. Um, so I gotta go get one of those as well. Uh, I'm hoping I'll be able to wrap this up today. Likely not, it's probably gonna bleed into tomorrow because it always does. So uh, let me go get those and if I have any other time today to, uh, you know, do the things, then uh, I'll see you then. All right. I apologize for the, uh, for the noise, but it's real cold, so get the heat going. Uh, first thing I'm putting in right now is the uh, uh, sending unit, the temperature sending unit. I'm just going to put a little bit of schmoo on here. And this is going to go, this Offenhauser intake is shaped a little bit differently from the factory one. The factory one kind of goes down here underneath the pump next to the head. It's still on the intake, the intake's just shaped differently. This one's actually going to go right up here next to uh, the fuel pump inlet. So you kind of got to very carefully bend this out of the way so you can still get the hose on. And then you can just screw this fella down. Got to get a wrench on that. <clears throat> Maybe a 15? Maybe, nope, probably a 17. That's good. I'm sure I got in the in the way of the shot for that, but that's good. Okay. Next piece is going to be the thermostat. Um, you always want to check what the degree rating, what the temperature rating on your thermostat is. This one that I got from O'Reilly's, I don't know how well you can see it here, but according to them, 180 uh, Fahrenheit is uh, the OE specification. Now, when I took the the old unit out, this says uh, 82 degrees Celsius, and when you convert that, it's 180. So we're going to use this one. The kit comes with a 160 degree thermostat, which I think is too low for this. So we're going to go with the OE style one. Um, you'll notice with this intake when you put this in here it's uh, pretty loose and that's when I realized that the kit comes with this uh, 132074 and this is like a rubber gasket piece that kind of takes all that slack up because I think this is designed to be used with a few different engines and this has a little groove here on the inside and it's just gonna fit over here like that make sure it's all seated nice in there that okay and then that'll just sit right in there now even with that you still need a gasket to go on top of it so I'm I've got some uh, I've got some water pump style schmoo that I'm gonna put on here looks like there's a piece of paper I've got to peel off the back of this 
never seen that before. Oh, it's sticky. That's cute. Um, I'm just going to put some shimu on both sides of this, put that on, and then I'll get the housing on. All right, so I've got all that sorted. Now I'm, you know, doing plugs and stuff now. Next piece is going to be this uh, kind of sort of block off plate. And this guy goes over here. And there's going to be another fitting that goes in this that, as far as I can tell, is going to feed the booster. Um, so, uh, I may actually, I don't know if you can see at this angle, but there's a hard pipe that goes up along the cowl over there. Um, and I probably am going to get rid of that because I think that there's going to be like a bit of a kink here and potentially the carburetor interfering with that. So I may uh, just get rid of that whole pipe and run a hose either with some clips uh, straight over to that and back or just right over the the thing to try to make it a little a little more cleanly. Um, I had a, there it is. Just gonna crank that down, mate, like that. Well done, Martin. Mutton. Okay, so I've got all my, my holes plugged in the necessary places. I need a little bit longer heater hose to get uh, to get to that guy. I've got my fuel lines kind of sort of run in the uh, the factory setup. I don't really like it because this is kind of just loose here. I don't have anything to secure that to anymore. So I may end up making my own lines. Uh, and maybe getting some clips to go on to here or, or something. Um, but before I do any of that, I want to get the carburetor on to see what I have for space uh, and where I can root things because obviously it's, you know, a big honking carb, so i got to make sure uh, how that's got to go. So let me uh, read through the instructions on how this all has to go together, and uh, let's uh, get that on. Uh, all right, well, I was going to try to put the carburetor on, but I got an issue. Uh, according to the instructions, it's a whole bunch of stacks of adapters and whatnot to put on. Uh, so I thought it would just be this guy, but I can't, uh, I can't. <laughs> so this gasket would go underneath this, but it doesn't have holes in it to go underneath this and for some reason this plate is threaded so I think this is supposed to go on top of this guy because these holes are threaded so it looks like this goes onto that thusly right because this has recessed uh, holes here in the top so that you can bolt it in to that and that gasket goes between them. The problem is that this guy, which would then be on the bottom, uh, doesn't actually line up with any of the holes. Like if I get one, I don't have the other three. Uh, and it doesn't seem to matter which way this faces, whether it's this way, it just doesn't, something, something ain't adding up here. And the three phone numbers that are on uh, LC's website uh, don't actually do anything. So I may try to call them tomorrow or shoot them an email, but something tells me modification required and I don't have enough gaskets anyway. Okay, it's, uh, it's the next day. I still have not been able to get a hold of LCE or Redline. Uh, so I'm going to keep trying because I really don't want to blindly drill an Offenhauser intake without really knowing that there are no other options. Uh, unfortunately, though, that means that I am kind of out of time for filming this because I still need to, like, edit everything, yada, 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 to get it out for Friday. Uh, which means, unfortunately, I have to end the video here, which sucks, but is what it is. So hopefully next time we see this, uh, I'll be wrapping this up and it'll be running and driving and sound minty fresh. Uh, with any luck. So thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, share with your friends. It really helps when you share because, you know, views and things. Um, and we will see. Oh, you can follow me on Instagram at Wickedworks. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the end of my script for this part of the video. See you at the next one. <laughs> I just spit all over myself. Ugh.